Get ready for the smackdown Get ready for the smackdown How you gonna react when you're put in the back Cause there's no turning back when you're facing the smackdown Hey poses I'm Grumpachito, and I'm here for this week's SmackDown in a Shot Glass. First off, I'd like to send out a message to wrestling fans 777 whatever. First off, I accept your terms of the if I lose the match. Second off, I will be getting to you soon about mine. I haven't decided yet. I'm stuck between two things, but I think I'm people are gonna like what I have chosen for you. Alright, we're let's jump right into the show. This week's edition of SmackDown is in my backyard of Seattle, Washington. We start off with an in-ring promo with Rey Mysterio coming out with his family. Could this promo get any more PG? Everyone's like, hey, we've seen Dominic before. Oh, and what was that? Was that before, like, when Eddie Guerrero said that Dominic was actually Eddie's son? Oh, they don't want to mention that. Dominic's all grown up now. So, then... They all, they, he says that, Rey Mysterio says that it's his daughter's birthday and they want to sing happy birthday. And I was begging for Rain, for CM Punk's music at this point. And then, CM Punk's music is hit. CM Punk comes out and he starts saying, oh, keep going, oh, the 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 And CM Punk cuts a really good, like, heel promo here. Kind of set up for their WrestleMania match. Which I'm thinking is going to be hair versus mask, I'm guessing. I don't know, maybe either that or like, if Ray loses, he has to join Straight Edge Society, he has to lose the match or something, I don't know. But anyway, uh, Ray leaves and, you know, he takes his family and he goes and, and then CM Punk starts singing Happy Birthday as he's leaving. It's just, oh, it's bad too. I was begging for a commercial at this point. Go to the first match of the night. It's The Miz versus R-Truth. Um, pretty good match to start off the show. I wouldn't say it was a phenomenal match, didn't have a lot of time. There was a commercial right at the beginning of it. Um, it was pretty good. The Miz was trying to do a jackknife pin with his feet on the ropes. Daniel Bryan knocked his feet off. And then, um, R-Truth hit the lie detector and hit the one, two, three. And then R-Truth is your winner. Start getting a little more of the feud between Miz and Daniel Bryan going. Woo! I guess a crazy pretzel will have to fill us in on how that's going on NXT. Um, I give this two out of five Yellow Rangers. It wasn't a particularly great match. It wasn't a particularly awful match, but it wasn't really that good either. Next, we have a backstage promo. Drew McIntyre and Teddy Long. And now, of course, Vince McMahon has expunged last week's loss, so now he's still undefeated. But And the chairman has handpicked Drew's Money in the Bank qualifier opponent, which I'm guessing is like going to be a wrestler, you know, a good at least a good wrestler, and uh, Teddy also makes it an icy title match. Go to commercial, come back, Drew comes out, and a local jobber comes out. So Vince, so now it's Drew McIntyre versus a local jobber. This was bad, even in terms of squash matches. I mean, it's a Money in the Big qualifier and an icy. Did they even lifted the icy title up before the match even started? I was actually kind of upset because I'm just like, you really seriously put the IC title on the line, even though we would have never won in a million years, you put it on the line. So on the Alpha 5 rating scale, I give this 1 out of 5. It was a terrible squash match, a terrible idea, terrible everything. Creative should have been shot for this one. So Drew McIntyre's finally in the Money in the Bank, and he's still undefeated this week, apparently. All right, next we go to the third match of the night, which is The Big Show versus John Morrison. This was actually a pretty good match. You know, John Morrison went back and forth with Big Show and actually had some pretty good offense. There was a great frying pan shot right in the middle of the ring. Like, Big Show pulled him out and had him by his hair, and he held him down and just, bam, and just knocked him right on his, just, oh, it was sickening. Um, there was all, it was just a good super heavyweight versus light heavyweight match. Um, it ended when Morrison went to go for a springboard in Seguri that he normally does off the ropes, but then Big Show just popped him in the face, and then one, two, three. I gave this, I mean, it wasn't a bad match. It was a decent back and forth between both guys, I would say. Um, I give this three out of five Black Rangers, because it actually entertained me. So, 
Um, next up, we go back to the backstage again with Teddy Long and my girl, Tiff. Teddy Long is welcoming Tiff, and then uh, Vicky Guerrero comes in and makes the beautiful meter go down a little bit. And then, apparently, um, Vicky Guerrero put Tiffany's a part of the SmackDown roster for Divas now, so now Tiffany has to wrestle, which I don't know if I'm excited about that or not. I mean, Tiff is good looking, and good, good on the mic, and in promos, but in the ring? Uh, we're gonna have to see. So we come back from commercial break, and we got match four of the night, which is the Hart Dynasty versus Crime Time. Um, this match was okay. I mean, it didn't go. It went about three minutes, and then the lights go out. Taker's gong hit. Lights come back on. There's Taker. I give this probably a two out of five grenade just because the action at the very beginning wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't terrible. Hard Dynasty and, our, and Crime Time do usually a pretty good job in the ring. But uh, afterward, Taker just killed people. I mean, Taker, you know, hit a beautiful choke slam on Chad. Hit an awesome last ride on Tyson Kidd. D.H. Smith got a nice tombstone, and then J.T.G. got the Hell's Gate, and it's just, you know, basically Taker just laid everybody out and hit all of his finishers and signatures. So, um, I would have liked to see the match, but Taker was looking strong, so I was okay. It just kind of was random. It's like Taker's, like, gone crazy, and he's, like, killing everybody, and then, I don't know, I mean, I didn't watch Raw, so it's like, did he go crazy on Raw too? Uh, I don't know. I didn't see the recap from Raw, so I don't know. Match five, of course, is Michelle McCool versus Tiffany. Now, this actually was okay. Tiffany started off with an awesome atomic drop. Um, she had a little bit of questionable, you know, like clotheslines and a uh, front drop kick that didn't look that good, but knocked Michelle McCool. Or she kicked Michelle McCool. She fell outside the ring. The brawling on the outside between the two was not bad at all. And out of nowhere comes the Latino bulldozer, Vicky Guerrero, and just mauls her over, getting getting her uh, Michelle McCool disqualified. So, and then, of course, they beat down Tiffany for a little bit, which is not cool, by the way. And then Beth Phoenix comes out and clears house. All right. And, um, so, then Vicky Guerrero's in the ring. She's like, oh, don't hurt me, don't hurt me, please don't hurt me, Beth Phoenix. And then uh, a crappy clothesline by Beth Phoenix on Vicky Guerrero. Vicky rolls out of the ring. I, uh, it was, it, I give it two out of five Pink Rangers because Tiffany had a strong showing in her debut match. Next we go to technically the main event, which is Kane versus Luke Gallows. This was a battle of the big men, and it was actually pretty good. Kane and Luke Gallows really went well, and Gallows has been really impressing me over the past couple weeks. So I give I give Luke Gallows this match a three out of five Red Rangers because Luke Gallows is actually doing rather well. Um... Afterward, you know, um, the match is going rather well. Kane hits an out-of-nowhere choke slam, and then CM Punk comes in and hits a GTS on Kane, getting, of course, Luke Gallows disqualified. And, and then Rey Mysterio comes out. They start brawling around. They start beating each other down. Um, I st still want to know if there's going to be a WrestleMania match between the two, although I'm pretty sure there is. Um, and that's about it for that. The main event, technically the main event, was uh, the high, Chris Jericho's highlight reel with Edge. This was actually a good promo in the ring. Like, I was expecting this kind of be pretty bland, pretty dumb about the whole spear thing. But actually, they didn't play off the spear thing too well. This actually was a kind of a Jericho-dominant promo, but it kind of went back and forth, too. I, I guess it was kind of in the middle. Um, Edge started off with the spear crap. He started off with it, but then it quickly went into Jericho talking about Edge being selfish and getting injured, and then Jericho brought up all of Edge's track record about injuries and about how while well, Edge was sitting at home for, like, WrestleMania 19, WrestleMania 20, other, you know, other times, WrestleMania, I want to, uh, 22, stuff like that, um, Edge was sitting at home injured while Jericho was performing in main event matches, i.e. Uh, Shawn Michaels and Christian at WrestleMania's, and... Then Edge interrupts, he says, oh, what were you doing while I was at home, sitting at home? You were losing. You lost to Shawn Michaels. You lost to Christian. You know, you're not, you know, you're not proving anything. So, they go, they go into, you know, regrets and crap like that. And then Edge says that, um, then Jericho uh, makes a comment about uh, Edge and Vicky Guerrero's story. Which, you know, Edge is like, oh, crap, you brought up Vicky. Oh, man. And, uh, so then Edge counters by saying, well, everybody has a girlfriend they regret. Mine is Vicky. Yours is the big show. And the crowd got a good laugh out of that. 
Um, going towards the end, you know, Edge started to play on the spear thing again, then Jericho just popped him right in the mouth. I mean, like, he popped the microphone right in his mouth. And then, there, you know, Jericho beats him with the stool, and Edge is, gets the... Edge starts coming back, and Edge starts trying to beat up Jericho. He tries to go for the spear. Jericho pops him right in the face with the title as he's running. Excellent end. Jericho standing tall with the world title. Overall, I give this show probably two out of five Blue Rangers. Even the end promo and the good Kane Gallows match really couldn't save this night. This was pretty, this is a little below par. So, sorry guys, but you know, you gotta do a little bit better than this to impress me. So, I guess that's it for this week's uh, Smackdown in a Shot Glass. I'm Grumpy Cheeto. Peace.